Bond films are known for transporting audiences around the world, so of course we have to travel as well with our crew and our equipment. We have a dedicated staff here of eight guys that look after the film on a day-to-day -day basis. Departments will come to us and we act on what the requirements are and we figure out a plan to make it work. Tons and tons of equipment that has to get over there in a hurry. The schedules are always really tight. We've got two units running. I think it's about 300 people strong. Once you've got it from the bond stage, you get it on a charter, in this case, out of Jamaica, and that's phase one. Well, originally we went into Kingston, the capital of Jamaica, but then they relocated to Port Antonio, which was on the other side of the mountains, which was about a three-hour drive. We're currently on the uh, dockside in Port Antonio. It's a very big logistical challenge. We're on the other side of the world from our home base. It's really exciting to be in Jamaica um, and, and to be part of that kind of Bond legacy and Bond history, which started with Ian Fleming writing the books here. It feels really iconic seeing Bond in this environment. We wanted to see Bond relax. This is where he's most comfortable. He's made a nice home for himself here. The spot that we chose to build Bond's house is the most incredible secret code. So we had to bring everything in. It's a very difficult place to service, but it was so worth it because when the house was built, it looked like it had always been there. I estimate that we sent 80 tonnes down to Jamaica. Ultimately, the main aim is to ensure that everything's happening as quickly as humanly possible. Ten times out of ten, in my experience, it gets there unharmed by DHL and their services. 